Hey everyone, it's Tyler Binkley here, and right now we're looking at using else if the section in Swift Playgrounds. It's the second section of conditional code in the Learn to Code 1 program. So, you know, if you didn't catch the checking for switches video, I would highly recommend watching that before you do this one because I really explain what conditional code is all about. And it's really important that you know what it is that I'm going to be doing before you watch this video. If, if it doesn't make any sense, I would highly recommend going back and watching that last video. So um, we are continuing on with conditional code. And now that we understand from the last video what conditional code is, uh, this one is just going to advance a, us a little bit more. So the goal is using if and else if to toggle a switch or collect a gem. And it says, again, try running the puzzle a few times and you'll find that the switches and gems both appear in random places. So if I run it, okay, now that time it looked like it, you know, so whenever you see those like white little outlines that show up, it's randomizing it. And that first time I got two gems. But now look, the second time I got two switches. I'm going to try it one more time. Okay, I got two switches again. I'm hoping to see if we can get a, a gem and a switch. Okay, two gems. I promise you, it could be a gem and a switch or a switch and a gem. And I'm still getting errors. Yeah, you know, this happened on my last one, but we're going to just keep going. It's the real world. We just keep on doing this. So the whole point is that it is randomizing. Oh, look, there's a gem and a switch. It's randomizing those two tiles. So we don't know what it's going to be. I, I can't just move forward right now and say, you know, collect gem and then move forward and say toggle switch. The whole point is every time you press run my code, it's going to randomize it before you can even see it. So you just don't know what's going to happen. Like this time I pressed it and it became two gems. So the whole point of conditional code is saying, you know, I want to have byte move forward, recognize what is there on that tile and then do the right thing. But we have to code him how to do that. We have to program him to do the right thing. And so, you know, if you look at this example, it says if is on a closed switch, toggle switch, else if is on a gem, collect gem. Really, I mean, I just break that down as saying, you know, if it's on a switch, you're going to collect it, or I'm sorry, you're going to toggle it, or else if it's on a gem, you're going to collect it. So you're kind of setting up a double condition, right? Like you're saying, you know, if it's this, do this, if it's that, do that. Uh, in my last video, I made the example of uh, trash being full. You know, like if the trash is full, you want to take out the trash. However, if the trash can's empty, don't do anything, right? Like we as people know that because we, we've had the experience, um, but Byte does not. So we have to teach him these things. We have to code him how to do the right thing. So number one in our direction says move to the first randomized tile. So I'm going to tap down below and say move forward. And I only need to move forward one time to get to the, to the first tile. Now it says add an if statement. Okay, so we're going to say if. Inside your if statement, add an else if block. And this might be my only um, critique or criticism of Swift Playgrounds. I really wish it told you or showed you how to do the if else statement and adding that else if block like it's saying to do. So what you have to do is you have to tap directly on the word if. And if you miss it, it doesn't work. It's got to be right on the word if so that you get these additional options. And then you see that there's two options in the beginning. We want to add else if. So really what this is saying, okay, if there's one condition, do this. Or else if there's this condition, do this, right? So there's like two conditions and we're going to tell it what to do for both of those conditions. So again, it's like, you know, if it's cold outside, wear a jacket. If it's hot outside, wear a t-shirt. These are things that we know as people, but like Byte doesn't know how to do that stuff. So we're telling him how to do that. Okay. So they even give us the example and that's exactly what we want to do. The example from up above. So I'm going to, I'm going to, Take note, you know, again, we use our context clues. If it's on a closed switch, okay, if it's on a closed switch, we don't care if it's an open switch. We only care if it's a, a closed switch because we have to open it. We have to toggle it on, right? 
So, and that's exactly what we always do. If it's on a closed switch, we toggle it. But if it's on a gem, because we don't know, it could be a switch or it could be a gem. So if it's on a gem, we're going to collect the gem. That's what we always do with gems. And you can see I just copied exactly from above. And hopefully that makes sense to you now, now that I explained it. And so that should take care of the very first tile. And notice it's randomizing. Again, like I said, every time we hit run my code, we just don't know what it's going to show up. So we don't want to just randomly move forward and say, collect gem, because it might not be a gem. And sure, we could get lucky, right? I could, we could do some probability here to figure out, you know, how, what are the odds that we get it right on the very first try? Um, but the, the goal with coding is to not base on luck. We want to make sure that it's working every time. And that's what conditional code is so helpful with. So now it says, repeat, repeat for the second tile. We're on step four. So, okay, we got to move forward. We got to do the exact same thing. Okay, so uh, I showed you this in the last video. It's the exact same thing. So we can really just tap on the thing. Now it needs to be all highlighted blue. So make sure you tap on it correctly. I'm going to say copy, and then I'm going to tap below where I want it and say paste. And now notice it pasted that whole thing. And if I run this code, and I'm going to do step through my code this time, so we can see what it's doing, right? It's saying, oh, okay. I'm going to run that one more time. It's moving forward. It's saying, okay, no, oh, it's on a closed switch. Toggle it. It skips the gem part and then it says, okay, move forward. Oh, this time it's on a gem. Collect it. So we're teaching it how to look for different conditions and do the right thing. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and have a great day.